In this video we're going to describe how to make a phone charger out of a jewel thief. Jewel thieves typically take low voltage DC power and convert it to high voltage AC power of the order of 40 to 50 volts depending on the number of turns on your ferrite toroid. So it's just so you have a 1.5 volt battery here. The 1.5 volt battery puts a voltage across the gate via this 1K resistor and the emitter and turns on the transistor. Once the transistor is turned on, the electricity can then flow to this other leg of the coil here. And um, so it will flow through this leg of the coil, through the transistor, and back to the battery. Once that flow of current happens, the voltage, most of the power is shunted through this leg of the coil, and that leg of the coil doesn't see much electrical flow which results in the initial voltage across that dropping to the point where the transistor turns off. Once the transistor turns off, this no longer conducts and the electricity can no longer flow through this back to the battery. And while the electricity was flowing through this, it developed a magnetic field. That magnetic field collapses and causes electricity to flow the opposite direction. Now in order for that electricity to flow around the circuit, you need a load here because the transistor no longer conducts with the base turned off. So your load, i.e. an LED or a motor or something, will transfer that power. So this uh, video is based on how to use that power for your phone. Obviously you can't use 40 to 50 volts AC power to power your phone. So let me just show you how to do There's this. There's some great instructables out there on how to do this and one of them is fairly recent by Millen showing you how to um, use a jewel thief to charge phones. So much of what I'm going to say is based on this instructable. Now here's the circuit that I came up with and what is uh, similarly shown in that instructable that I just showed you in the previous um, shot. So here's the jewel thief. I'm going to power this off a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery. And the transistors I'm using are MJE13007. MJE so this, de this generates that high frequency 20 to 50 kilohertz alternating current, which is rectified with a Schottky diode. The reason we use a Schottky diode is it has a low voltage drop. And you don't want to lose much of that voltage, you want to keep as much as you can. So the low voltage drop and the relatively fast response of these shock diodes is desirable. The uh, energy is stored in this capacitor which can charge up to 50 volts if the circuit is not regulated. And we don't want 50 volts, we want 5 volts to work a phone. And this is where the second part of the circuit comes in. There's the second transistor which is identical to this. Um, the base of that is connected to the uh, voltage on that capacitor and depending on where you select it, if you use a variable resistor, you can alter the um, voltage on the um, emitter and therefore change the voltage on the base of this. So you've got feedback and therefore you can change the voltage that you get on that capacitor. Now typically Phones use 5 volts, but if you just took the 5 volt output and connected it to the um, green and the black uh, wires on your USB cable, the phone cable will not work. And the reason, is, the reason is the newer phones need a 2 volts, need 2 volts of um, charge on the data cables. And let me just show you a little diagram, and that is shown in the instructables that I mentioned earlier. So this is your typical generic USB cable and the power cables are both of, at, at both ends of it. So the black is zero volts or ground and to the right, and this is a female USB uh, cable, to the right is the red five volts and the data which is green and white is in the middle. Now if there was no voltage on the data, this would not work. So what you need to do is to have two volts on each of these 
to give you 500 millivolts of charging. And here's uh, the output from our Jewel Thief circuit here. Some, modi some modifications that I've made to this Jewel Thief, I've added a little Zeno diode here, a 9 volt Zeno, to protect the base of that transistor from voltage spikes. And I've also added a 10 nanofarad capacitor right across this core here, effectively across that core there, to uh, dampen any voltage spikes. And that seems to help with smoothing out the output. So here's our completed uh, setup with a fairly large ferrite toroid. I've connected in a firewire cable as you can see here, and we're going to test that on an iPhone. The unit is now turned on and I'm seeing 9.75 volts across the uh, power lines, across the resistors. So what I'm going to do is adjust the um, variable potentiometer to get me 5 volts. Turning it down. Whoops, we overshot a little bit. We're now at about 5.1 volts. Now we're going to plug the phone in and see what happens. Okay, I'm just about to plug the uh, phone in. Uh, let me get these cables together and show you what happens. Let's see if it works. I tried it without the uh, 2 volts and it didn't work. There you go. It's working and it's charging. Wonderful. So it's working and um, we're using a 3.7 volt battery to charge a 5, point, a 5 volt phone. I'm sure you could do the same with a 1.5 volt battery. Thanks for watching and please come back for more videos.